Hello, this is William from Visual Components, and welcome to part two of the Product Stacker video tutorial. Now in this video, you're going to learn how to model a component so that it can be connected and controlled using a PLC, in this case a TwinCat3 PLC. Now to do this, I'm going to show you how to create signals in a component for PLC interfacing, execute Python script on top of PLC logic, map signals in a component with PLC variables, and add, connect, and test a PLC project in a 3D simulation. So right now in the 3D world I have a component selected and this is the component you should have modeled in part one of the video tutorial. Now if you don't have this component it will be included as an attachment in the forum post associated with this video. So you don't have to sit through the whole first part if you don't want to. Now in my layout I've created I have a feeder, the product stacker, and a conveyor. So when I run the simulation you can see that the feeder feeds parts of the product stacker the platform moves down to form a stack, and once the stack reaches a certain number of parts, it will move back up and feed the stack to the conveyor. So it should stop at four parts, so once we get the fourth part, yep, the platform moves back up and ships out the stack. So I'll stop the simulation right here. What we can do is we can create some signals in this product stacker component and then connect them to a PLC project, and we can control when this platform moves up and ships out the stack of parts. So I'll reset the simulation, and I already have a PLC project set up to handle this, so I'll go and show you that now. Okay, so here's the PLC project, and you will be able to have access to this PLC project in the forum post. So I have my global variable list here, you can see I have two variables. I have a bundle ready of boolean type, and move servo of boolean type. And I also created a function block called stacker, which is a ladder. You can see that when the bundle ready signal is received, it will then be a rising trigger to then set the move servo to a true value. And that will also indicate a falling trigger where the move servo is then reset. So if we actually go to my main program, you can see here I have call one stacker, and it's actually calling my function of the stacker block. So this will be the project that I'm going to execute during the simulation. So what I'll do is activate the configuration for the PLC. I'll click OK, and everything looks fine. I'll just restart. All right, and then I'll go and click this icon here to log in, and I'll create the port of 851. Click yes. All right, now the PLC is set up. So now we can go back to your 3D product, and we can connect this PLC using the Visual Components PLC add-on. So now I need to connect my PLC project to my 3D product, which in this case is 3D Create. So I've already downloaded and installed the PLC add-on, and you can see it listed here as a tab in the tab pages. Now since I'm using 3D Create, I do need a license to use the PLC add-on. If, for example, I was using 3D Automate, I would not need a license to use the add-on. So to connect to the PLC, I'll click the PLC add-on tab here, and I'll go down to the Actions section, and then click Add PLC Connection. I can now manually type in the connection, or I can select it from a list, which you can see here. So I already have a TwinCat installed locally on my device, and there is the port of 851. So I'll scroll down and click OK. And now I need to give the properties a group name. So I'll just type in main and give an update rate of 10 milliseconds and then click OK. Now at this point you'll be prompted to map variables in your PLC to items in the 3D world that are set up for PLC interfacing. Now we have not done this step yet so I'm going to go and close this out. And we can see up here at the top in the PLC connections we are connected to the TwinCat PLC. Now whenever you're modeling components and you're already connected to a PLC we do recommend you disconnect from the PLC first and then model the components and then reconnect to the PLC. So I'll select the PLC connection here, I'll go down to the action section and click disconnect. So once I finish modeling the product stacker, I'll just reconnect to the PLC connection. So let's go ahead and go on to the next step. The next step involves modeling the product stacker so it can be connected and controlled using my PLC connection. To do that, I'm going to create signals in the product stacker, which I have selected right here in the 3D world. Notice here in the PLC add-on, I'm disconnected from my PLC connection. I'll now go to the Create tab, and notice I'm working in the root node of the product stacker. In the Behavior sub-tab, I'll go to the Signals drop-down menu here, and click Boolean Signal. So this creates a Boolean Signal, and here are its properties. I'll go ahead and rename this signal Bundle Ready. And I'll connect this signal to my Python script in the component. So here's the connections. And remember, you can click this button here in Connections Property to access this editor. And I'll add the Python script behavior as a connection. And what this means is when the 
value of bundle ready is changed, the Python script will get a notification of that event. So I'll close this out. And when the value of bundle ready is true, that signals that the stack is complete and it can't be shipped out from the product stacker. If the value is false, that means that the bundle is not ready, it's still being formed. So I'll close this. And I need to create one more signal. So I'll go up here to the signals dropdown menu, click Boolean signal, and here are the properties. Let's go and rename this signal to be move servo. And I'll go and connect this signal to my Python script to get the event registered. So add Python script. So when the value of move servo is changed, the Python script will get a notification of that event. So I'll close this out. And when the value of move servo is true, that signals the product stacker to move the platform up and ship out the bundle. If the value of move servo is false, that means the stack is still being formed, don't move up the platform. So I'll close this out. And now to connect these two signals to my PLC connection, I need to create an interface. So I'll go here to the drop-down menu for interfaces and click one-to-one -one interface. Now the first thing you need to make sure you set up for the interface is that it's abstract. So this is abstract property. I'll select its checkbox. And what this means is that I'm forming a remote connection, not a physical connection. I now need to create a section in this interface. So here for the sections property, I'll click this button here. And now for the interface this is a very important step. You need to create a section that is called PLC. So I'll go here and click new section. I'll click the section once and pause and then rename it capital P, capital L, capital C. So as long as you have this section here labeled correctly at PLC, you can then map the signals. So now I need to create the fields for the signals I want to connect. So I'll create a signal field. I'll set the signal to be bundle ready. And I'll do the same thing for the move servo signal. So I'll create another signal field. And that'll be for signal move servo. So I can now connect these two signals to the PLC. Let's close this out. And now go back to the PLC add-on. So I'll click the tab here. I'll select my PLC connection, and I need to reconnect to it. So down here in the Actions pane, I'll click Connect. You can notice up here in the PLC connection, it's green, so it's connected. I'll now click the main group here. And down in the Actions pane, I'll click Add Item. This opens the configurator for mapping the signals. So one easy way to quickly connect the signals is to select this connect by name checkbox. So if the signals have the same name as their PLC counterparts, you can quickly map them. So over here, in the simulation list, you see, yes, there's our bundle ready and move servo signal. So they can now be connected to items over here in the PLC. So I'll select bundle ready. You can see automatically the signal with the same name in the PLC is selected here. And I can now click this converging arrow to map them. So you can see now they're listed down here, great. Let's do the same thing for the move servo. So there's, I have it selected. Here's its PLC counterpart. Click the converging arrow, and there they are. Now sometimes you do need to turn the connect by name checkbox off, and you have to manually map the signals. But in this case, it's a simple walkthrough. So the one last step, and very important, is once you have your signals listed down here and they're mapped, you need to click this Add button so they're added to the PLC over here. All right, so don't click Close, click Add. So I click Add, and you can see, yep, now they're listed over here. So I'll close this out. You can see there's the PLC signal and its 3D world counterpart and its value. So now we can go on to the next step. The last step before we test our solution is to model the component so it has logic for working with a PLC. You know, you just can't connect the signals in the PLC and say, oh, why isn't it working? You do need to do some more work. So I have the product stacker selected here in the 3D world. And since I'm going to be modeling it again, I need to disconnect from the PLC connection. So in the PLC add-on, I'll select the local TwinCat connection I have, go down to the Actions pane, and click Disconnect. I'll now go to the Create tab. I'm going to be working in the root node of the component. I'll then access the Python script listed here in the Behavior sub-tab, so I'll double-click here to access the script editor. And we've already wrote a lot of code in part one of the video tutorial, so we'll just add a few more lines for the PLC. So what we first want to do is get variables for our PLC signals. So the ones that we have mapped, the PLC I mean. So I'll go here to the on run and I'll add two more variables. So I'll go ahead and, and write bundle ready underscore PLC equals comp.findBehavior. 
and I'll be looking for a behavior named bundle ready. And I'll do the same thing for the move servo signal. So move servo underscore PLC. And this is just to denote that it's a PLC signal or it's mapped to the PLC. So I'm using the component object and the find behavior method to find a specific behavior named move servo. And now in the main loop of the program, we can see after we form the stack, the servo then moves the platform up. So before it does this, we'll add some PLC logic. So what we're going to add here is we're going to inform the PLC that the bundle is ready to move. So we're going to use the signal method using that bundle ready signal we have set up. So bundle ready underscore PLC. And with the signal object, we're going to use the method signal. And this will signal all connected behaviors of what the signal value is. So it's kind of registering its event. So since the PLC variable is mapped to this, it will get that notification. So I'm going to signal true. And now let's go ahead and write some more code for moving the platform. So we're going to move the servo using a PLC. So right before the servo is moved, let's go ahead and create a trigger condition. So this is a method you can find in VC script, and it evaluates a condition when a trigger is received in the Python script. So to do this, I'll write a lambda function. So I'll write lambda colon. And I want to get a specific type of trigger. So I'll evaluate the trigger by using the get trigger method available in VC script. And what this will mean is it will test what trigger was received. So if that trigger is equal, to move servo underscore PLC and the move servo underscore PLC dot value is equal to true, then go ahead and execute the next line of code. So to quickly review this again, I'm waiting for a trigger to be received or an event. I'm then going to evaluate a condition I wrote here. So in this case, I'm using a lambda function to test if the trigger is move servo PLC, if it's that signal received from the PLC. And if that signal's value is true, go ahead and move the platform up and ship out the bundle. Now, after we do all of this, we do want to reset the bundle ready signal to false. So I'll go ahead and write here, bundle ready underscore PLC. And I'm actually going to signal to all the connected behaviors that the value is now false. So this will also inform the PLC of what the bundle ready status is. So it's still making a new stack. So let's go ahead and compile the code and exit out of this. And what we can do now is connect to our PLC and test our solution. So I'll go back to the PLC add-on tab, select the PLC connection I have here, go down to the actions pane and click connect. And now we need to run the simulation, but before you start running a simulation, always make sure you're running the simulation in real time if you have a PLC connection active. So what you can do to double check that is click this arrow here to access the simulation settings. You can see I actually have virtual time on, so no, no, no. Let's go ahead and select the real time option here. Close this out. So now when I run the simulation, you can see the stack will be formed. And let's go ahead and select the main group of properties here. So we should see the values change along with the stack. So there's three parts. Where are the four parts? Come on now. So, yep. So, yep, you can see the signal values change. The platform's moving up the part. And they should change back. And there they go. So I'll go ahead and let the simulation run for a bit. And I'll access the PLC project that's running right now. So I now have the PLC project running side by side my 3D world simulation. You can see it's waiting for that bundle ready trigger. So now the stack is formed. Yep, it sends the signal, the platform's moving up, and then it will reset the signals like it just did. Great. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and stop the simulation, reset it, and I'm going to disconnect from my PLC. And at this point you could save your layout and you can also just select the component here, go up to the file menu, and then click Save Component to update your changes. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our community at community.visualcomponents.net, and I hope you have a wonderful day.